Why is it that the chimpanzee shares more parts in common with me than a dog? Well, some creationists, they appeal to common design. And that's great as far as it goes. But common design doesn't answer the question that I just posed. Why is it that chimpanzee anatomy is much more like mine than that of a dog? To emphasize this, I will utilize a human skull and compare it to the skull of other primates and also of a non-primate dog. Right now, these skulls are randomly mixed together. If I wanted to pick a skull that was most like that of the human, which one should I pick? Pause the video if you need more time, but more than likely you said this one. Now I want you to pick the one that would be most unlike that of the human skull. Well, I think this one would be most different. And in fact, if you picked it, you would be correct because this is the skull of a dog. As it turns out, this is the skull of a chimpanzee, this is a baboon, this is an owl monkey, this is a lemur, and this, of course, is a dog. You will probably not be too surprised to learn that this sequence can be found in many secular textbooks to help fortify the belief that humans evolved from lower vertebrate groups. Of course, this is only a first order approximation because in actuality, and according to modern evolutionary theory, these are all modern groups that each have their own primitive common ancestors. But even so, this observation is real and from a creationist perspective requires an explanation. Why is it that the human skull is more like that of the chimp than it is to the others? Now, don't get me wrong here. There is a definite difference between the human skull and, say, that of the chimpanzee. But this difference doesn't remove the apparent continuity that exists between these skulls and the fact that this thread of continuity seems to converge towards the plan of the human skull. Adding the skull of a capybara helps to emphasize a real thread of continuity that exists within these discontinuities. Of course, the secular community explain this connectivity in terms of descent with modification or Darwinian evolution. And I can see why they might join the dots this way. But how are Christians to explain these data? Common design or a common designer tends to be the default Christian explanation. But is this a robust apologetic? Think about it. What does common design mean anyway? Yes, I think common design can answer questions about why all vertebrates have two eyes or why DNA replicating machinery is very similar across the entire spectrum of life. But that doesn't answer questions about shared anatomy when the anatomy in question goes beyond the realm of a function. Vertebrates may have two eyes because this number of eyes is functionally superior for life than say three or one. But why do all the primate skulls move towards a plan that resembles that of the human and one that is markedly different than that of the dog and certainly of the capybara? The answer cannot be a functional one dependent on habitat as humans have always lived on the ground while primates live much of their lives in the trees. I mean, from a purely functional perspective, God could just have well as made the human skull unique, a one-off that looked nothing like any other animal. Some might object and say that God, for whatever reason, just wanted to make some animals that looked similar to humans. And with this, I agree. But this reason has got nothing to do with the way these creatures functioned. To say that God designed a creature to look like a human is to suggest that God specifically used the human body plan to design these primates, something he did not do when designing, for example, the capybara. This kind of design is called structuralism because the design is based on a previously existing structure. Humans do this all the time when they design cars. The SUV design, for example, is designed from the structural design of a station wagon. Automobile creators did not sit down and derive the SUV design from a motorcycle. The fact is that when we compare the bone structure and morphology of the primates, as well as that of recent hominid finds, 
there's no escaping an underlying structure that is common to all of them. Charles Darwin explained this structural continuity in terms of descent with modification, and ever since then, Darwinian evolution has rallied around this phenomenon. So how should creationists interpret it? Well, to find out, please make sure to subscribe and check out part two that's coming up soon. So that's all from me here, Ken Colson at Creation Unfolding. If you thought this video was helpful, then it would be incredibly supportive if you could hit that like button, if you could subscribe and ring the bell. But the greatest support that you could provide me is prayer. So I would ask that you would stop right now if you could and pray for me. That would be really, really appreciated. Thank you and goodbye.